Hello guys! Today's video is about interpretation of regression analysis results. By the way, if you haven't watched the previous video on performing linear regression using Microsoft Excel, please watch it using the link gg.gg slash fats-r-v1. Today's learning objective is to interpret and create a discussion of the result of the regression analysis. And to recall, in our previous video, we have nine independent variables, which some of these variables could be the predictors of our dependent variable, which is the price of the car. And today's analysis is to answer the question, which among the factors are the predictors of the price of a car? In the last video, when we performed the linear regression using Microsoft Excel, we were given these results, table 1, model summary, table 2, ANOVA table, and table 3, table of coefficients, which we might wonder how to interpret this statistical information or which among this information will be included in a report. So let's get right through it. Table 1, model summary. So we have multiple R, which is also called as the correlation coefficient, which tells us the level of prediction of the independent variables to our dependent variable. And in this example, a value of 0 0.901 indicates a high level of prediction. Next is R square. R square is also called as the coefficient of determination, which tells us how much percent in the change of the dependent variable is attributed to the de independent variables. And in this example, a value of 0.8126 tells us that the independent variables explain 81.26% of the variability of the dependent variable. However, R square has a limitation. That is, the value of the R square increases by adding independent variables to the model even if the added independent variable is not really significant to the dependent variable. That is why we are going to use the adjusted R-square value in our report to overcome the limitation of the R-square. And in this example, the adjusted R-square value of 0.8008 means that if a dependent variable changes, 80.07% of this change is due to the independent variables. So now let's proceed to tables two and three. And in these tables, we are going to use these values and compare them to 0 0.05 to come up with some interpretation. However, these numbers could be confusing like this one because this is really 3.23 raised to 47. So there is an exponent here. So this one is 1.47 raised to 21. This one is 4.15 raised to 5, and this one is 1.44 raised to 6. So if you want to change the format of these numbers, so let me bring you to our Excel file there. And all you have to do is click the cell here and go to the home tab. And in the home tab, please go to the number group and click the comma style there. You have now the number in two decimal places. Similarly, highlight the cells under the p-value column of table three, then click the comma style of the number group in the home tab. There you go. Now let's go back to our interpretation of results. So let's start first with table two. And this information tests whether the over overall regression model is a good fit for the data. That means, in the other words, the ANOVA table gives us a permission to continue to table 3 and use its information to determine which among the independent variables are the predictors of the dependent variable. So just a rule of thumb in, uh, in interpretation, if the p-value is less than 0 0.05, then we can continue to table 3 otherwise not, and we will use a non-parametric test to analyze the data. And in this example, our p-value is less than 0 0.05, so therefore we can proceed to table 3 to identify the predictors of our dependent variable. So how are we going to come up with the write-up for this interpretation? 
So we can have this statement here. The table shows that the independent variables significantly predict the dependent variable. And just add this information to justify the previous statement. Where did we derive this information from table two? So those information in the box came from there. So it would be less than 0 0.05 is from the significant F column. The F9144 came from the degrees of freedom there. And your 68.436 came from the F value there. Now let's continue to table three. So this table will tell us which among the independent variables are significantly related and the predictors of our dependent variable. Again, just a rule of thumb, if the P value is less than 0 0.05, then the corresponding independent variables are the predictors of our dependent variable. Otherwise, it is not. So in this result, only the real base and the MPG are not the predictors of our dependent variables since their p values are not less than 0 0.05 and the other independent variables are the predictors of our dependent variable because again their p values are less than 0 0.05 so to come up with an interpretation for those information we can have this statement the coefficient table below or table three provides us with information which among the independent variables have a significant relationship to the dependent variables. Or you can say which among the independent variables are the predictors of the dependent variable. So in this table, we can conclude that the type of a car, engine size, horsepower, width, length, curve weight, and fuel capacity are significantly related to the price of the car. And by the way, Please justify that statement by putting P less than 0 0.05. That means that these independent variables are the predictors of our dependent variables or dependent variable. On the other hand, real base and MPG are not significantly related to the price of the car. Similarly, indicate that their P is not less than 0 0.05 by indicating itself the value of their P. In this case, wheelbase is 0.44 and PG is 0.5. So how are we going to come up with a summary of those interpretation for these three tables? So we can have this paragraph for that. We say multiple linear regression was utilized to determine which among the independent variables are factors that significantly affect the price of a car. Table 1 shows that there is high level of prediction of the price of a car. The 9 predictor model was able to account for the 80% of the variance of the car. Table 3 presents that the type of the car, engine size, horsepower, width, length, curb weight, and fuel capacity have a significant effect on the price of a car. On the other hand, the world base and the MPG show no significant effect to the price of the car. So that's it, and thank you for watching.